<laughs> now we'll round out the first half of our program with a writer whose first book, Three Cubic Feet, is a 2012 Lambda Literary Award finalist in debut fiction. Her work has been published or will soon appear in fourth genre, New Stories from the Midwest, The Missouri Review, Literary Mama, Midwestern Gothic, Jabberwock Review, and elsewhere. She lives downstate and teaches at Eastern Illinois University. Please give a warm hand to Lania Knight. Thank you. Thanks so much, Andrew and Bill, for hosting this. It's fantastic. Um, I'm going to read uh, an essay for you, um, some, some parts of an essay. Um, it's called, There's Fire Here. You know how it is with the midwife. You cry, and her arms hold you. You falter, and she catches your hand. You will walk another step. She laughs with you in the waking breaths when the joy and pain and fear are coming one upon the other. And she wipes the sweat from your brow, the vomit from your chin, the shit from your legs. She walks beside you even when you don't know she's there. And Eduardo, the man with the dark laughing eyes is her lover. Would you like to work with the man I met in Spain? She asks, it is years later, years after the birth. There is the table and there is your body lying on top of it and she's with you, a long, deep massage. It is the time just after the month long illness, the high fever, the delirium and the thoughts of death. She places warm stones on the spine. She tugs at the earlobes. He is a true healer, she says. He can help you if you're ready. We begin with the massage, she says. There's a mat on the floor. He bends the body in strange ways, stepping on it, pulling the arms, pressing his heels and elbows and heavy palms into the flesh. Two hours, scented oils, exotic music sung in exotic languages, three hours and then sitting on the mat on the floor, cross-legged. Give to me your head, he says. Try. Give to me. He pushes the head around in circles, loops, twisting it sideways, back and forth, up and down, popping and crunching. And are you giving to him your head? Try. Do try. But you've been holding up your head, your own head, for so very long. How to give to him your head? Just do, decide, and let go. See the breasts swinging, the hips showing through the cotton sheet that has fallen away, and feel something sweet for the wrinkled belly, the skin that stretched so thin when it was full with child years ago. I tell you a story, Eduardo says. My doctor told me I am a young man. He tells me, Eduardo, if you do not stop drinking, you will die. Your liver no function. And this is how one person can die, start drinking at 11 years old. Smoking, taking the drugs, it is not so difficult to understand. It is our culture, and violence is our culture. We have festivals of violence, the parents slapping the kids, the yelling, and this violence enters one body. <coughs> it makes one sick inside, so I say, I don't want to die. When I, where I can go that I know die, and I choose India. I heard of one Swami, and I want to live, so I travel. I pack a very small bag. I am not thinking to come back. And I find one ashram, one village, where I can learn the healing. I no drink alcohol, no eat meat, no milk, and slowly, slowly I begin to heal. He says to lie down. He straddles the hips and says to make an oo sound, like the letter U, then he begins bouncing. Laugh, because it feels ridiculous. Almost, but why argue? Have you ever been to India or Bolivia or Peru, where Eduardo has traveled by foot? Many long minutes. Now please get up, he says. He lies on the floor face down, and the instructions are difficult to follow. The accent, the dopamine of the massage. The final position makes your bodies look like a plus sign. Eduardo face down on the floor, and your body across his face up, spine to spine. It is very painful. He has a timer. He says, just a little longer. Stare at the ceiling, the tops of the windows. He counts out the seconds. Roll to the side, rest. My father, he used to beat me, Eduardo says. It is how his father treated him and his grandfather and so on. I do not blame him, but when I return, I am ready to stop the violence. I am home from India and we have dinner. He is angry at something and he raises his hand to me. I laugh, I say, what will you do to me? Do not hit me, old man. And he stops, he laughs too. 
Eduardo's eyes are smiling. He kneels. We must discharge the energy, he says. He slowly pushes on the feet, the knees pressing into the body. The legs roll, and the body is a ball on the mat. Flatulence, please, no. <laughs> but he is the midwife's lover. Remember, relax. Her patience, her kindness, are his patience, his kindness. The hand towel woven through the legs, it covers the vulva, the perineum that tore so many years ago in the hospital with the first baby, but it is healed, it is covered. He wedges his knees under the hips, he asks questions. It is the same with your father, the violence? Yes, and his father beat him, and so on. There is violence in the body, but we release it, we work on you. Breathe slowly, slowly, as he lowers the hips, inch by inch. One day, maybe you will say to your father, no more violence. Maybe. You are no longer afraid of him? Silence. Maybe you are like the ugly duckling. You think you are in the wrong family. He lowers the feet to the floor and moves away to lean back against the wall to rest a moment. The biological family, your mother, your father, are not the true family. You are swan, but they are ducks. They are angry. All they know to do is violence. He stands and holds out his hand. Come, let's go to the sink and do the mouth work. Purging. Lean forward over the bathroom sink, head lowered. The porcelain is cool, and a line of mucus spindles from nose and lower lip to the metal drain. It is an old sink, but clean. Eduardo stands near, murmuring encouragement in his gentle English. He has his hand inside, his fingers pressing the flesh inside the mouth near the tender tissue of the throat below the jaw. He has washed twice, once before putting the glove on, and then again after pulling it down tight around his fingers. Gag again as he adjusts his hand, shifting weight from one leg to another. There is the strain of standing in one place for 20 minutes, 30. The glove squeaks across the teeth when he moves his fingers. Perfect, he says. Moan, and a tear escapes and slides down the thread of mucus, connecting Eduardo's hand to the metal at the bottom of the sink. It is not crying, like the spit and snot that come with vomit during an illness. There is no stopping this tear. His fingers, it's like giving a blowjob. During labor, the second time, the time at home, the midwife said, horse lips, and she sputtered her lips. It will loosen your vagina, she said. The lips and the mouth are like the vagina and vulva. They swell and they darken with blood when you are aroused, when you are giving birth. Close the eyes. He presses a spot in the neck, and it is like he has pressed a button for sadness. Cry. Cry waves. He moves his finger to the soft palate. Heave once, twice. The leg is kicking at the toilet behind, a horse trying to stomp out of its stall. Eduardo soothes, clicks his tongue at the tugging, the trying to pull away. The jaw aches and the shoulders are, are shaking. Heave again, and a light brown clump comes up with the mucus. See, si, see, si, Eduardo says. Forget for a moment that it means yes in his language. Look, and the brown spot slides down the white porcelain and along the edge of the metal ring at the bottom of the sink. Then it disappears, a little brown spot, now gone. Thank you.